On this episode, you're going to meet a former model who's been on the cover of Playboy three times uh, and who has since become a, a very successful entrepreneur. Hello, I'm Shannon Skinner, and this is Extraordinary Women TV. Well, joining me in the studio is Anissa Holmes. She is the co-founder of Iris Blue, uh, an event staffing company based here in Toronto. Now, you'll meet her in a moment later in the interview. Before we take a break, I'll have my regular Good to Know Minute when I ask my guests for their top success tip, and you'll hear Anissa's. Well, welcome to the show, Anissa. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you for having me. Well, it's nice to have you here. Okay, so now, I have never met anyone who's been uh, in Playboy, mm -hmm. let alone been on the cover, and then on the cover three times. Mm -hmm. um, so, what was that experience like for you? You know, honestly, it was amazing. Uh, it's, it's a great company. They're, they treat everyone like a family. And so it's very warming, very welcoming. And I had nothing but positive feedback from everyone, from my family, my friends. Um, and it was really interesting. I also got a chance to travel and do some of the things and really see places that I never otherwise would have been able to see. And you were young when this... I was young. I started... Not that you're not, not young <laughs> now, but you were younger. I was younger. I started uh, in 2007 was the first time I was published with them. So, yeah. And you got to meet Hugh Hefner? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That was, was that experience like? Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. He's very kind. He's very kind and very docile, and he's just a great man. So... So for how many years then um, did your modeling career span? I mean, you did qu uh, quite a bit of modeling. I did, I did. Uh, I think also because I, I began when I was 27, I also began um, more of an adult, I think, than most young girls who get into modeling. And so I looked at it right from the start as a business. And what could I do to, to make this a legitimate business for me at that time in my life? And so. Um, uh, yeah, so I was really able to do quite a bit with it um, and to to advance well. So I think probably in total six years, five five years maybe that I I modeled, but I did the transition from modeling to acting in the last couple years because I think that's what where I really felt more at home, if that makes sense. What's been your favorite role that you've played so far as an actress? Um. My favorite role, you know, I really enjoy commercials. To be honest, I've done, mm. I've done movies and I've done um, television spots, but I think the things that I enjoy the most are the little tidbits in the commercials because you meet so many new people on a regular basis. The crews are so large, and you get to work with really fun people, and there are a lot of local actors, so you get to work with a lot of people over and over and over again. Um, so I don't know, off the top of my head, there's one that is still running, which is a Life Mates commercial I did almost two years ago, which is still running now. So it's my little 15 minutes of, or 15 seconds of fame, I should say. Now, you're a, a, not, you're a mompreneur as well. I am. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a term that's coming up more and more. Uh, first of all, what is a mompreneur? Can you, for those that maybe don't have an, an understanding, our viewers, you know, educate us on what a mompreneur is. Uh, for me, personally, a mompreneur is uh, a mother who is balancing the, the, the life of having a career, as well as balancing her family life, as well as balancing the life of having young children. Um, and doing it with grace and, you know, ease according to people's perception and so it's it's an honor for me to be considered a mompreneur um, and it's really a title that I carry around like a badge because I work really hard to be able to have a good balance with my family, have a good balance with my business and not leave anyone you know um, in the, not in the dust, I won't say in the dust, but not leave anyone behind, behind perhaps, yeah. yeah, behind and so for me it's really important that I, I I can continue to, to be that strong um, figure of a mother and uh, a female entrepreneur that's huge for me. Um, and you know, to be a, a good businesswoman all around. And well, I know that you were also nominated for a Mompreneur Award recently oh, yes. as well. So that's, congratulations, that's Thank great. Thank you, that was really, uh, that was a big, big deal for me because at the end of the day, it, it gives me a pat on the back knowing, or to tell me that, you know, what I'm doing is, there's a reason for it. 
and uh, there are people out there who are appreciative of the fact that there are women out there who are working hard and they're doing the best that they could do to support their families and, and themselves ultimately so it was really uh, a big honor for me to be nominated it was out of something like just over 250 Canadian women um, across the country really so well congratulations thank now, you now you so after modeling and acting um, mm -hmm. you decided to grab the uh, entrepreneurial horn um, bull by the horns um, so let's talk about your business, mm -hmm. Iris Blue. Yeah, what is it? So Iris Blue is a national event staffing agency. We have over 3,500 talent across Canada and we are fully equipped to service over 15 markets. So we're the only agency currently who is fully equipped to service all of those markets. Um, and we really uh, focus on having an array of talent, everything from your brand ambassador, your event personnel, uh, trade show staff, guerrilla marketing staff, the street teams you see a lot. For me, what's important is these people are, in most part, the first point of contact for your brand, for your event, however, however these people can be utilized and this particular talent can be utilized. And so one of the things that we noticed, myself and my business partner, was that there was a real lack in the management aspect uh, of the event personnel themselves. And so where we try to differ from other staffing agencies is we really put a lot of attention, a lot of focus on ensuring that they are fully trained um, and fully prepared for whatever the event may be because it's all about brand messaging, it's all about uh, portraying the event portraying the brand, um, really portraying whatever it is that the client um, is hoping to get out of that particular event. So can you give us an example of some of the big event that you've done? Um, yeah, I can give you a few different events. So one of our clients uh, is Bacardi Canada, mm -hmm. and so we do uh, what they call um, Bacardi House Social. And that one is geared towards the more university crowd. They go to different bars and different uh, clubs and they do a lot of uh, data collection. So they introduce strangers, and that's the whole idea, is they will help facilitate an introduction f between two people. It drives it into social media, um, and it's all across Canada. Another client, as an example we've done, was for Peller States. The, for their 50th anniversary party, uh, we provided a dance troupe who did a huge um, presentation, like a, a big dance um, performance for their guests. Something else that we've done, we do a lot of the service staff for big venues, for like event venues. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it really is, is such a, a huge array of different levels of experience that we offer. And so do you, you have offices now, satellite offices across the country? We, yes, we do. So we have satellite right. offices across the country mm -hmm. in all of the major markets where we are able to facilitate. And we also have uh, general managers in all of those areas so that a client will always have a point of contact wherever that event happens to be because a lot of the clients that we have are not only from Toronto, although we do a lot of Toronto-based clients around Canada, we also have a lot of clients that are you know, from their, their hometowns and so they really want to feel like there's a point of contact for them there. So what do you love so much about uh, about your business? I know that you speak so passionately about it. You know, I just, I, I love everything about it, to be honest. I love the interaction with people. I love meeting new people. And that probably stems a lot from the modeling that I did in the past. Uh, I dealt with models a great deal and, and photographers and television and all that stuff. And so for me to bring that in a, in a different um, way and to still experience the same things that I loved about acting, loved about modeling, but in do it in, in a way that for me feels more natural for this point in my life, especially with a son. I'm in a different place in my life right now. And so I just really, I think what it comes down to is the, the new people. I'm a really big people person and I really enjoy meeting new people. And this is the prime sort of job to do that because I'm constantly meeting new staff, constantly meeting new talent, constantly meeting new um, clients and all the people that go to their events. So did you have to, I mean, this is, um, you know, different, obviously, I mean, mm -hmm. well, you've been a model, but now as a businesswoman, did you have to learn new skills? Did you have to, I mean, what did you do to, to learn what it takes to be a businesswoman? Um, you know, it, it's, 
It's a big learning curve, uh, and I'm still learning, to be honest. I, I don't think there's ever going to be a point in time when I will stop learning to better myself, to better my business. Uh, I had to teach myself simple things like payroll. I've done payroll, but never to this extent. Um, little things like, the one thing that I did take from the modeling was negotiating. I learned how to negotiate very well, and at an earlier age, um, so that was something that I was able to tra transition into this business. But, you know, all the basics that go with running a business, I've had to learn. Social media, I knew, but I knew in a different respect. I knew to promote myself as a model. I, I didn't know how to promote my business as a business in this respect. So it's been a learning curve, and I do a lot of research and ask a lot of questions. And I've really used my network um, wherever I can. Now, Nisa, uh, we just have to take a quick break, and that means it's my good to know minute. Mm -hmm. And I know you've got a great success tip. I do. Do what you love doing because that is the ultimate success for life, for business, everything. Do what you love. Do what you love. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for that. That's good to know. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, more on Extraordinary Women TV. So stay where you are. Welcome back to Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner, and I'm speaking with Anissa Holmes. She's the co-founder of Iris Blue, which is an event staffing company here in Toronto, a former model and actress. And, and uh, we were talking about, uh, in the first part of uh, the interview, that you were on Playboy mm -hmm. uh, on the cover, and you met Hugh Hefner, and an exciting career. Um, but have you ever failed? I mean, failure, you know, I've been reading a lot, you know, I read a lot of blogs, mm -hmm. uh, read a lot of newspapers, and failure seems to be something, the topic of failure in business cups, it has been coming up quite a bit in the last couple of days in what I've been reading. Have you failed in your mind? Have I failed? Um, you know, I, that that's a, that's a big question, and, and off the top of my head, I, I don't, feel as though I failed, realistically. I try my best in everything that I've done. Um, maybe certain things that I'd hoped I, you know, would happen or places that I'd hope I'd be at this point, I'm not there yet, but I don't consider that a failure. You know, it just gives me the drive to work twice as hard and the, the passion and the ambition to want to make that happen. So do I think that I've failed? I don't think so. Um, but uh, it'll definitely make me want things more if I don't have them when I, in my mind, have decided I should have them. Because a lot of people are afraid to try something new. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, tr they're afraid to try a new business or yeah. they're afraid to start a new career uh, because they're afraid to fail. Like the analogy is often that a baby, when a baby learns to walk, the baby step, you know, stands up and tumbles over and stands up and tumbles over mm -hmm. and it's never failure, it's always... Uh, you know, a lesson in learning how to walk, uh, and that somehow uh, when we're adults, uh, we well, we're conditioned, I guess, when we're going through school, yeah. to start seeing mistakes as failures and mm -hmm. therefore the need for per perfection and uh, therefore the need to not want to look foolish or embarrassed. So often people will find this when they start a new business, and so for you, um, you see it in a very different way. Yeah, and, and it's, you've touched on some interesting things. I mean, uh, children are fearless. They're, they really are fearless. And, and I think I've learned a lot from, from my son, just watching him, because he, he does what every other child does, just as you have explained. Um, you know, I, I felt those fears before I was modeling. I worked for the government. I had a set job and the set pension and benefits and, and all of that. And it was really hard for me to walk away because although I was much younger, I had been there for such a long time. And the prospect of what I potentially could be losing, even though I wasn't happy, 10, 20 years down the road, scared me enough to keep me in that business, um, or at that job, I should say. And it wasn't until I just quit and left it um, and went into modeling, which is such a, a huge leap.
that I learned that if I don't take those opportunities in my life, you know, you only live once. And I know it's a saying that's it's an old saying, people say it all the time, but the reality is you really only live once. And so if I don't take this chance and I don't do something that may seem crazy, I may not have another opportunity to do it. Well, of all the things that you've done then, mm -hmm. do you have any regrets? Uh, no, to be honest, I, I don't have any regrets. I, I've learned from everything that I've done and every mistake that I've ever made. I take it to the next part of my life um, and I try to learn from it. So Anissa, if you, if, if, if a young entrepreneur um, wannabe approached you today and said, I want to know um, what advice you have for me starting off in business, what would you say to this young entrepreneur wannabe? I would say to, um, hmm, I basically say to uh, ensure that you know all the, the the good and the bad that can come with taking a leap like starting a new business um, and to, to really utilize your own personal network because family and friends and those in your circle can be of immense help when it comes to starting a brand new business. Well, Anissa Holmes, I have really enjoyed uh, having you here on the show uh, and hearing a, a bit more about uh, your background from what I had known. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wish you all the best uh, with what you do. Thank you. And thank you for having me. Well, if you're interested in finding out more about the show, I'd encourage you to visit my website at ExtraordinaryWomenTV.com. Follow me on Twitter. I post lots of updates uh, there. Well, if you are interested in transforming your life, I hope these stories have inspired you. You've been watching Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner. See you soon.